praise you. Oh, we worship you, Lord, this morning. We give you praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving for your presence, for your goodness, for your faithfulness. Hallelujah. For your forgiveness, for your salvation, for redemption, for revelation of the Word of God. Hallelujah. That we may be taught who we are and what we have in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for redemption realities. The fact that we've been redeemed, hallelujah, from the curse. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Amen. Say this, say, Jesus came to the earth to redeem me from the curse. Say that again. Jesus came to the earth to redeem me from the curse. Amen. Now, certainly, communion is a celebration of our covenant. No question about that. I've, I've taught that. I've preached that many times. But stop and think about it. If Jesus had not come to the earth to redeem us from the curse, we wouldn't have a covenant. I'm going to talk to you this morning about Redeemed from the curse. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Liberty. Worship team. Praise God. Give them a hand clap, please. As they come down off the platform this morning. Now open your Bibles, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Um, today is Communion Sunday. And uh, we're going to be receiving the communion elements at the conclusion of the service today, so don't leave early until you uh, take communion with us, amen? Because that's uh, a powerful time in the Lord. Uh, communion is a holy thing before God, you know that? Uh, communion is not just a religious ceremony, huh? It's not just a religious ritual. If that's what it is to you, you won't get very much out of it. Communion, if you state it out in the Word of God, is a powerful faith exercise. Miracles can be performed. Healings can happen. Hallelujah. Amen? During communion? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen? Yes. So don't get religious on me this morning. Yes. Who in here is religious? Oh, thank God. No hands went up. No hands went up. Who in here has a relationship with God? Amen. Amen. See, there's a difference. You can be religious and go straight to hell. If you've not been born again. Nicodemus, remember him? Third chapter of the Gospel of John. He was a relig religious leader. Didn't even know God. Personally, personally. He knew about God. He believed in God. Well, the devil believes in God and trembles. He believes in God, but does not respect God. He believes in God, but does not respect the word of God. Amen. There's more to it than just believing in God. You've got to be born again, born from above, born from the spirit of God. Amen. And that happens when you say, Jesus Forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And I'll serve you for all eternity. Now, when you do that with a believing heart, you just got born again. If you've already done that, but gotten away from God, you need to go through that process again then. Why? Come back to him. Come back to him. And renew your mind with these Bible facts, amen, and do what I call update your salvation. <laughs> amen. I say amen. amen. Praise God. Did you bring your Bibles this morning? Hold it up real high. Let's make our confession. Let's say this. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. This morning, I'll be taught the Word of God. 
I'll never be the same. My ears are open. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the never changing, the ever living, the indestructible, the incorruptible seed of the word of the living God. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout amen. amen. Praise God. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Just going to read a few verses here. Then we'll come, we'll come back to it later. Amen. Now I want you to get a hold of what we're going to be teaching on this morning. Because if you get, if you get a hold of it by revelation, it'll set you free. Amen. Praise God. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 11, verse 24, verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, hey, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. He was betrayed by someone on his staff. Imagine that. The treasurer, the money person, <laughs> betrayed the master. Yet, he took communion with him. Took communion with him. Amen. Would you love someone enough that the very person that betrayed you, you'd take holy communion with them? And then wash their feet. Jesus did that. I said, Jesus did that. And he's our example, isn't he? Hmm? He's betrayed. But he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. See, for your faith to work, you got to be quick to forgive. You can't go around holding grudges and have your faith work for you. Amen. Now, we all get offended. All of us get offended at, at times. But staying offended is a choice. The way you handle, I mean, Jesus said, offenses will come. They come to all of us. He said, but woe unto him through whom they come. See, offense is going to come. But you got a choice to make. You're going to stay offended or you're going to let it go. And be forgiving. So you got to let things go. You can't hold on to things. Amen. So you, because faith working by love, you want your faith to work, don't you? <laughs> then you got to be quick to forgive. See. Amen. So he's betrayed by Judas. Verse twenty-five, verse twenty-four. I'm sorry. And when he gave him thanks, he broke it and said. What do you say? Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Now, yesterday we had a memorial service for our brother, Tim Walk, who is now in heaven. And uh, he's up there shouting, dancing, having a grand old time. <laughs> Amen. He's just having the time of his life up there. I know, I know he is. And uh, memories were shared yesterday of his, of his life and just had a wonderful time in, in God's presence, you know, sharing memories of Brother Tim's life and, and what he uh, meant to us and how he impacted our lives. Well, that's what communion is. You're putting God in remembrance of what Jesus did for you. Amen? See, oftentimes, when it comes time to take communion, people get religious. And they cry. And they bawl. And they squall. What are you sad about? What's so sad about what Jesus did for you? Well, what he went through for us. Well, but he's healed. That happened 2,000 years ago, at least. His wounds are healed. Amen? He was wounded for our transgressions. 
Amen. He did it for us. And the word says he went to the cross with joy. Therefore, you can go through what you're going through right now with some joy. Hallelujah. Huh? This do in remembrance of, of me, of what I did for you. You know, remind yourself. How's faith come? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. The best way for faith to come is for your ears to hear God's word coming out of your mouth. The first thing you, the first thing that comes out of your mouth when you run up against a hard place, that's what's on the inside of you. If a bad word comes out, that's what's in you. The word comes out, that's what's in you. Hmm? Verse 25, after the same manner also he took the cup when he'd supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of what I did for you. You can get your breakthrough today. You can't get it if you're being religious, but you can get it if you get the revelation. Amen. I say amen. amen. Glory to God. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Praise God. Now then, let's go to Galatians, the third chapter. Now, certainly, communion, like I already said, is a celebration of our covenant. It, it is that. But it's much more than that. I say it's much more than that. Because he had to come and redeem us from the curse, which is what ratified our covenant. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ hath what? Redeemed us from what? From the curse of the law. This is something he's already done. You're not going to get redeemed after you die and go to heaven. No, you receive redemption while you're down here. He's already redeemed us. I say, he's already redeemed us. See, Christ ha hath. Now, I'm not a school teacher, but I know the word hath is past tense. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. In the same way that Jesus was made sin for us, he was made a curse for us. The reason why every human being, when they're coming to, coming to the earth through the womb of a, of a woman that's how we get in here every human being comes in here with a sin of adam in them why because of the curse jesus came to redeem us from the curse hallelujah the curse of sin the curse of sickness disease and pain the curse of poverty he did this so that the blessing of abraham might come upon us, or the Gentiles, which that's us, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, the curse consists of three primary things. If you read Deuteronomy 28th chapter, which don't turn there, but if you read that sometime, the curse consists of three primary things. Number one, the second death. Number two, sickness. Number three, poverty. And Jesus came to redeem us from all the curse. Can you say amen to that? Amen. He redeemed us from the curse so that we can live in the blessing. Amen. So sickness is part of the curse. Say that. Say sickness is part of the curse. Part of the curse. Well, that being said, healing is part of the blessing. Poverty is part of the curse. Say that. Say, poverty is part of the curse. With that being said, prosperity then, prosperity is part of the blessing. 
Now, now go to 1 Peter chapter 2, please. 1 Peter chapter 2. And look at uh, verse 24. Who his own self, referring to Jesus here, bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that's the cross, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, Peter here is looking back to the cross. Now, in Isaiah, don't turn there, but chapter 53, it says that we're healed with the strength of Jesus. So Isaiah was looking forward to the cross, but Peter here is looking back to the cross when he said, by your stripes ye were healed. Well, see, were is past tense. That means healing has already been provided for you. You don't, you don't got to even pray and say, God, would you please heal me? He's actually already done it. Our job now is just simply to receive it. How? By faith. By believing the word of God. Amen. Now, Jesus took 39 stripes upon his back for our healing. So if you've got lower back issues, <laughs> think about this now. He took 39 stripes upon his back so that your back could be healed. I receive that. So I receive that. I receive that. Now, did you know that medical science has learned that there are 39 categories of diseases? One stripe for each category. That means no matter what you're going through in your physical body, you're covered by at least one of those stripes. Amen. So Jesus took one stripe upon his back for each category. Amen. Now then, these stripes that are laid upon uh, Jesus' back happened on his way to the cross. They took him to a whipping post. And he, he was whipped, he was beaten. And these lashes that he took, there was, there was glass on the ends of those lashes so that when they went into his body, chunks of flesh would be ripped out of him. He was beaten to a pulp. Did that for your healing. I say, did that for your healing. Isn't that wonderful? Don't we have a wonderful Savior? My, my. So, Jesus redeemed us from sickness and disease and through those stripes took upon his back, he made his healing power available to us. Amen. His body was broken for our healing. This do in remembrance of me. This is very seldom taught. It's not taught in most churches. Very few churches, if any, teach this anymore. This is not a religious service. This is communion. We're going to do it the right way. We're going to use the word of God and get into it and do it the right way and receive our healing glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And let miracles be performed in our midst today. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> now, go to uh, Matthew's gospel, chapter 27, please. Matthew, chapter 27. Look at verse 26. Then released he Barabbas. Do you know, he was a murderer, but they had him released. 
and, and killed Jesus. Sound familiar today? Where they accuse somebody that's innocent? Huh? And argue to let somebody that is truly guilty go free? Sound familiar today? Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Say to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they placed it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him, and they mocked him. Wow. All this time, he said nothing. Never talked back. Never cussed. <laughs> Never said nothing negative. Just remained silent. Just, he just took it. They mocked him, saying, Hail, king of Jews. And they spit upon him. They spit upon him. Wow. And took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. Now, I want to read this same portion of scripture here from the Amplified Bible. Now, listen to this. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the palace and they gathered the whole battalion about him and they stripped off his clothes. See, he was naked before God, before the whole world. And they put a scarlet robe, garment of dignity, and office worn by Roman officers of rank upon him, and weaving, weaving a crown of thorns. They put it on his head. They didn't just put it on his head. They pressed it into his scalp and blood squirted out. That was for our prosperity. That was to redeem us from the curse of the hard life, the curse of poverty. And weaving a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed, a staff in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they made, a, they made sport of him, saying, Hail, greetings, good health to you, long life to you, king of the Jews. And they spat on him and took the reed, the staff, and struck him on the head. When they finished making sport of him, they stripped him of, of the robe, so, so now he's naked again, and put his own garments on him and led him away to be crucified. Now, go to uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 3. Genesis, chapter 3, and uh, verse 17. says, unto Adam, he said, and the he there is, is God. God said this to Adam, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed, say cursed. Cursed, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Thorns, verse 18, thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In Verse 19, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it what wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. Now, let's stop right there. <coughs> These thorns and thistles here represent the hard life, the cursed life, poverty. So this crown of thorns that are weaved and, and pressed into his scalp and blood squirted out, that is to redeem us from the curse of poverty. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I mean, he covered it all. The cross covered it all. Jesus was, Isaiah said it like this, Jesus was chastised for our peace. Now, where peace in the Hebrew means prosperity. It means nothing missing, nothing broken. So that... So he was chastised with that crown of thorns that pressed into his scalp for our prosperity. Ooh, glory. Can you say glory to God? 
Now, now go to 2 Corinthians, you'll see it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, you'll see it again. This is what communion is all about. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Now look at verse 9. For ye know, what do we know? Hmm? We know the grace, say the grace, that's favor you do not deserve. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. Where did he become poor at? At the cross, where he was stripped of all his clothes. He's hanging naked before God, before the whole world. He had everything, but he became poor, amen, that ye, or that we, through his poverty, might be what? Rich. See, this is a redemptive scripture here. That's a redemptive scripture here. Amen. This scripture here is talking about the blessing. He bore our sins, sicknesses, diseases, pain, and poverty in order to redeem us to the blessing. He redeemed us from sickness to healing and health. He redeemed us from poverty to prosperity and wealth. Well, both healing and prosperity are part of the blessing. Now, go to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. And verse 22 says, The blessing of the Lord. Say the blessing of the Lord. What's it do? It maketh it rich. You see that? Same what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse, verse 9. It maketh rich and he had no sorrow with it. So Paul was talking there about the blessing. Amen? So, when we partake of Holy Communion, we're putting God in remembrance and reminding ourselves of the fact that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law and now we can be healed and we can live in the blessing. Communion is all about the blessing. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 now. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Communion is all about the blessing. And verse 16 says, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So, you can partake of the elements and use the elements as a point of contact in which to release your faith to receive your breakthrough, to receive your healing, to receive deliverance from debt, whatever it is. Use your faith and receive from God. Now go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 again. I said we're going to come back there. Go back there again. Verse 23. For I received the Lord, and which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he betrayed, took bread. And when he given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat this in my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So when you partake of the bread, or the we have crackers here, <laughs> then you're doing that in remembrance of his body, which is broken for your healing. So you can receive your healing this morning. You can be healed this morning of whatever it is that's going on in your body. Amen. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So when you partake of the cup, the juice, then you do it, you're doing it in remembrance of what Jesus did for you through his blood. His blood redeemed you from all the curse, praise God. The curse of sin, sickness, disease, pain, and poverty. Amen. You can use that cup. It's a point of contact in which to release your faith 
to receive your breakthrough. Amen. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. Now, how do you partake of communion unworthily? By saying, oh, I don't deserve this. I, I don't really feel all that righteous this morning. It's not about you. It's about him. Not about how you feel, it's about what he did. <laughs> Amen? No, no. You partake of the cracker and the cup worthily because of what he did for you. So now you partake of the elements in a worthy manner. Why? You're doing it by faith. You receive what he did for you at the cross by faith. Can you say amen to that? Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread... Drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Doesn't say examine your neighbor. Doesn't say examine someone who's not here today. Say examine yourself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause men are weak and sickly among you, many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. You don't judge someone else, you judge yourself. Of any wrong attitude, any strife that you have in your heart towards someone, you, you judge that. You, you judge that. You, get that. you get rid of that. Amen? Why? So your faith will work and you can receive your breakthrough. Amen? And like we discussed earlier, at the very beginning of the message, um, offense has come to all of us. Staying offended is a choice. That's one of the greatest weapons of the enemy that uses against Christian people is to get them to stay offended. Now the faith won't work, and now the curse comes in. You know what the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 40, I think 47, 48, something like, somewhere along there, that if you serve the Lord without a joyful heart, the curse of poverty will come upon you. So stay full of joy. Serve God with joy. Amen. Keep that curse far away from you. Praise God. Amen. And live in the blessing. Amen. So go ahead and form a line to my left or to your right. And Christopher is going to serve the elements to you. Amen. Praise God. And uh, just return to your pew with the elements. Don't partake just yet. We'll do so in unison. Praise God. Christopher will serve them to you. Amen. And uh, it's going to be a wonderful thing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Just keep your focus on Jesus. That's where your miracle comes from. I'm not the miracle worker. I just lead you to him. I point you to him. He's the miracle worker, amen? He's the one. He's your healer. He's your savior. He's your deliverer. I can point you to him. I can pray for you. But he's the one that performs a miracle, amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel his presence. I feel his presence. I feel his presence. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, my Lord Jesus, for what you did for us. We're reminding God and ourselves this morning of what Jesus accomplished for us at the cross. The fact that he's redeemed us from all the curse of the law. The curse of sin. The curse of sickness, disease, and pain. The curse of poverty and lack. We're free today. We're free this morning. We're going free from these things in the name of Jesus. Glory to God.
now in the name of Jesus for those who need healing this morning I release right now by faith the healing power of God to go into your body in Jesus name to undo that which Satan hath wrought to effect a healing and cure in your body in Jesus name in Jesus name now as you partake believe that you receive you may partake I receive, Lord. I receive my healing. I receive, Father. I receive. Amen. Thank you, Father, that Jesus' blood was shed for the remission of our sins to redeem us from all of the curse of the law. We might be healed and live in the blessing, Father which belongs to us. We're supposed to be healed. We're supposed to live in abundance. And so I agree with every family represented here this morning for abundance to be released and flow into their lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just say, I receive. I receive. I receive. Amen. You may partake of the cup. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. 